Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna attempt to repair spun bearings in an old Mercury Sable. If you would like to see the first half of this video, I will leave a link in the description below. The day has come and parts have arrived. I have here a set of connecting rod bearings, some exhaust flange gaskets, and an oil pan gasket that's going into this old Mercury with this three liter Ford motor. All right, this is the number six rod cap. It's very important that we get all this clean, get the oil out and any dust and debris out of here before we place the bearings. And again, keep your bearings clean don't get any contaminants on them. I'll use this one. You'll notice that the bearings have this little tang here. That tang will line up with this groove to, to locate the bearing and prevent it from rotating. And we will do the same procedure on the connecting rod and the engine with the other bearing half. We left off with the number six connecting rod journal. I polished it with emery cloth, sprayed it down with brake clean, and I'm now gonna pull down that connecting rod and piston, install a new bearing, place it in position, then I'll bolt this one together. So I'm just gonna reach up with this hook, grab a hold of the connecting rod and pull it down. Okay. Again, take two. Again, there's a tang relief on this connecting rod and the tang in the bearing has to insert into that relief notch. And I'll slide that into position, feels good. Now I'm just gonna get a hold of the rod with my fingertips, pull it down towards the, the crank bearing and pull it into place. But before I tighten all this down, I'm gonna put some Lucas oil stabilizer on this journal to serve as, a, as an assembly lube. Got a decent glob of it on my finger. And I'm just gonna smear that around, covering the journal. That way during the first few minutes of engine start, these bearings will maintain lubrication I'm gonna run these fasteners all the way down by hand and then torque them to spec. All right, I just pulled the torque specs. For these connecting rods, it's a two pass specification. First pass is 17 pounds. Second pass, I believe is 32. So there's a click on 17. click on 17 and second pass now at 32 foot-pounds click at 32 click at 32 moving on to cylinder 5 again I'm reaching the piston with a hook I'm gonna pull this piston and rod down where I can reach it. Okay. 
without gouging the crankshaft. Here it comes. All right, that's within reach. Again, I'm gonna apply some lubrication to it after I install that upper bearing. Clearance is a little tight, so I'm just gonna rotate this back some. Now I can reach up there to get some lube installed. Okay, this rod is home. Bearing slightly out of position, so I'm just gonna nudge that up into place right there. And now comes the rod cap with the new bearing. torque wrench is set back down to 17 foot-pounds. There's a click. There's a click. Back up to 32 pounds. Two down, four to go. Number four is way up high, so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this engine around, bring this journal back down here where I can work. And again, I'll retrieve the rod and piston with, with a hook. This bearing half is going into the rod. So I'll sneak it up into there. Once more with some flucus. Pull it down home onto its journal, right there. And here comes the cap. And here comes the impact. That might have been 17 pounds right there. Let's uh Let's check that. There's my socket. 17. Move you guys over some. And 17, okay. Step it up to 32.
three down, three to go. Again, I need to fetch the rod with the hook, pull it down. And this one still has the bearing in it, so I need to sneak that little guy out. That was easy. And new bearings going in. Oh, I almost dropped it. Not good. Doing most of this by feel, I can barely see what's going on up there. Okay, that bearing's a little, little sideways. I'm gonna try to push it over. Nope, can't reach it. There it is, it's in its tang. Or the tang is in its groove, almost, not quite. That's it, now it's home. Pull this piston back. Need my hook again. I can't can't get the finger strength on it. Once again, here's the connecting rod for, looks like cylinder three. New bearing is installed. I've got some Lucas on the journal. And this one is getting, getting installed to its, uh, its matching connecting rod. and 17 foot-pounds. Click. There it is. Step it up to 32. And 32. Earlier I did not remove the connecting rod caps from cylinder number one and two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and then install the replacement bearings. In order to do that, again, I'm gonna use this wrench on the crankshaft pulley, rotate the engine around to gain access to the fasteners. Okay, the bearing stayed up there on that one. Let's pop 
this one out. Yeah, not terrible, but not good. That's terrible. Although that bearing was garbage, this uh, journal looks okay. So I'm just gonna spray this down and, and proceed. dropped it. I do not want to drop these bearings and get them dirty. Alright, that one's in but it's slightly misaligned. Again, I'm going to push it out and start over. If I can get, maybe I can just move that bearing over. It's a little too far to the left. And I dropped it. Dad with the parts cleaner, good to go. I'll try again. Looking better. And I heard it click. The tang is lined up with its notch. This one's ready for some Lucas. cap again new bearing is installed Again, 17 pounds. Click. Click. Second pass, 32. And I'm going to spin it down to get a hold of uh, number two.
No, wrong one. I'll have to retorque that. Mm, it's not the worst I've ever seen. bearing for rod number two up and around I have it backwards All right. up and around the tang is almost in line there it is and I push it up into place it's there. A little bit more assembly lube. And I'll pull that one down. And it's home. Last cap, last bearing. In position. Okay, first pass, 17, there's our click. 17. There's our click. Now I'm just gonna rotate this engine around, make sure everything feels good, check for any binding. Feeling good. This is also gonna help to distribute the lubricant around the new bearings. Okay, I think we're good to go here. Time to put the oil pan back up, fill it with oil, start it, and hopefully we've remedied this, uh, this noise and this engine's gonna have a few more years of life left in it. Okie dokie, friends. Now I just need to clean off this gasket surface here and reinstall the oil pan, which is still in the parts dishwasher. I can fill this back up with oil and we are going to start this engine. Cross your fingers, everybody. First things first is gonna be to get this windage tray back in position. I'll follow that up with a manual 
torquing. And I'll follow up behind that with a with a ratchet. There we go. Next is going to be the oil pickup tube with the new O-ring installed. bolts again I'll finish these off by hand Good. And there are four more nuts for the perimeter of the windage tray. There's two. Three is over here. Four right here. Now we just need to apply some sealant here and here. And we'll put the pan back up. About a dime sized dab is all we really need. A little more on that one. There it goes. Okay. The pan's nice and clean. Just came out of the parts washer. There's a new gasket. And I'm going to install a fastener. One on each side to locate everything as I set this pan into position. And here she comes. So I'm just going to thread these first two fasteners first. Now it's in line. Here's that flashlight again. Okay, it's in its home. Now I'm just gonna run around, put all the rest of the fasteners in, and then I'll zip those guys in and continue to uh, put this back together. Again, I'm not gonna apply any torque to these until all of them are in position.
Except for that one. Not on my team. more left here and two more on that side and we're all set I almost forgot to fit this bracket all right there we go there's one nut up here two more nuts here and then there's two bolts that bolt to the output shaft on the transmission Two, and then there's the one nut that goes way up high. I already have one bolt in, and there's one more up a little higher. I can't see it, but I can feel it. Is it in? It is now. Ah, there. couple baby duck and ducks should finish off this bracket let's install our drain plug before I forget how embarrassing would that be I can build an engine but I can't keep oil in it there Okie dokie, so I have the exhaust pipe set back up into place and I just need to install the o-ring gaskets. I already have one in place here 
and I just need to pluck this one out, slide in the new one, bolt it together. The pick was ineffective, so I will now escalate. punch is ineffective. I will now continue to escalate. The pocket screwdriver is effective. I will now return to the pick. Got it. Hmm, it won't stay by itself. I have an idea. I have installed a glob of grease on this O-ring gasket to help it stick. Voila. Okay, we are looking at the rear exhaust manifold and then the mating flange that bolts up to it. I have this flange bolted in almost. I need to make sure everything else is lined up before I torque these fasteners and compress this gasket. Again, I'm still attempting to torque this rear flange gasket. Since the exhaust is fairly secure, now would be a good time to install the O2 sensor connectors. Put that up into position, and I'll reach around, get a hold of it, and feed it into its counterpart. And same procedure with this first connector. It is now time to install the zip tie mod. Modification complete. Just a couple more fasteners to go. I broke that one. Just one more bolt down below and then we can move up top and get the final flange gasket. Seeing as how I broke this bolt earlier during removal, I had to drive out the broken part and replace it with a new fastener.
And that will about wrap up all the work from the bottom side. Let's let this down and fill the engine oil. One last flange gasket to go. Check this out. It's a ratcheting crow's foot type wrench. It's excellent for those hard to reach bases. Highly effective. Make sure the letters point the right way. Oakley Dokley. So the bearings have been replaced. The oil pan is in. The exhaust is installed. Bolts are all tight. Oil is in the engine with a new filter. Let's hit the key and see what happens here. What do you guys think? Is it gonna purr like a kitten or throw a rod? We're gonna find out right now. Oh, okay, this thing seems to be in good shape. Let's go for a ride. You guys might remember this low coolant light right here. I have determined that this is a false indicator and that the engine coolant is not low. This is probably due to a faulty sensor in the coolant overflow bottle. Before we go anywhere, here comes the real test. We're gonna bring this up to, I believe it was 2,500 RPMs where the knock occurred. And we're gonna see if we still have an engine knock. Good, nothing yet, nothing yet. There's the sweet spot. No knocking. Success. All right, let's get out of here, hit the road. Cool part is, is I don't have to replace this uh, oil sticker again. I'd like to thank everybody for hanging in here with me on this one. I had a good time repairing this engine. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and I'm really glad you were here with me while I got this done today. If you really, really liked what you saw here today, hit that like and subscribe button and then tap that notification bell right next to it. That way you get an update every time I upload something new. If you don't feel like waiting that long, just click the link above for pre-release footage of a dusty, crusty, dirty minivan. I promise that video is not as long as this one. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. I hope to see you again next time. And most importantly, don't forget, have a great day. Free check. Okay, all the pieces stayed inside. Good job, guys.